Hello, 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 everyone, far and wide, tuning in live or later after the fact. This is Yes Shift, another Yes Shift News Desk edition. Uh, this time uh, with me, Stephen Schinder, because uh, that's how scheduling worked. And I'm going to try to talk about some stuff within the allotted time frame I've set aside for myself. Things have been very busy these last, well, couple weeks, really. Um, but there's been some stuff happening, so I'm going to talk about what I'm able to talk about. One of the big things that happened, of course, is the John Anderson and the Band Geeks news. So I'll get to that in a moment, and there's a couple other things. But first off, I just want to like take a moment to, you know, show respect, give our dues for the late great Peter Banks. Uh, the other day would have been the 11th anniversary of his passing, and it's really hard to believe it's been that long since Peter passed away. Um, like time is just like really weird, like that. My earliest memory of seeing Peter's playing with Yes was, of course, in the Yes Years documentary, which I watched as a kid, and they showed him playing No Opportunity Necessary, No Experience Needed with them, and that black and white footage uh, from the show Beat Club, I believe it was called. And, of course, his playing was also featured in the snippets from the Time and a Word promos, although they didn't feature Peter in those visually because he'd left the band by then. It was a weird thing that happened. Um, so there were things in the Yes Years documentary that I committed to memory, you know, as a little kid, but other things kind of went over my head. But then years later in like 2003, um, I got the compilation CD highlights the very best of Yes and I was reading the liner notes, you know, the personnel info for the tracks. And the opening track was Survival, and followed by Time and a Word. And it mentioned Peter Banks. And I'm like, wait, Peter Banks? Who is this? And then, you know, I probably talked with Dad about it at the time over the phone. And later realized, oh, he was the guy who was in that, clip, that black and white clip in the Yes Years documentary. And of course, later on, I would listen to those first couple albums. And Peter was, you know, he's not given as much credit as he should have been given, you know. Um, he not only did he come up with a yes name, but his playing is really great, like within those songs that you hear on the first couple albums. Um, and you get to hear more of him on the BBC Recordings compilation. And yeah, there's been a documentary in the works for a while. I believe it, maybe, I could be mistaken, but maybe people could still make donations to it. It's called Claiming Peter Banks. Uh, if you go to supposableproductions.com, you can see if they let you uh, make a donation like to contribute to the completion of that documentary. I really hope that it comes out because uh, there's a lot to be said about Peter and they've interviewed a bunch of familiar guests for that over the years, it seems. So really hoping that that sees the light of day in the not too far future. So yeah, um, gone but never forgotten. Uh, I know that's a cliche to say, but you know, Peter is Peter Banks was such a huge presence, you know, and um, people should keep on remembering him. So speaking of remembering people, uh, last week we did a Chris Squire birthday episode here, and there have been some nice birthday posts for that as well. I saw that Miguel Falcao posted his tribute where he did a bass cover of Release Release from the Tormato album, of course, and um, yeah, sorry, I'm just like sharing this around, um, and yeah, it's a nice selection there, uh, you know, Release Release is such a rocking song, only played a few times on the Tormato tour, 
I believe. It, it was kind of difficult for them to figure out like how to do it, I guess, in a way that honors the song, you know? Uh, so yeah, happy to see that and some of the other tributes that were going around. Now, another thing uh, pertaining to a tribute band, um, sorry, let me check something real quick. Make sure my mic is all good. Okay, yeah. All right, sorry about that. Um, so, uh, got a bit of news from Close to the Yes. It's a um, Texas-based Yes tribute band. And they are part of this event that is going on uh, later this month, I believe. Let me just pull up the info for that. And I'll, I'll include the link to this event in the comments of this broadcast. Uh, so, just copying tasting and yeah this event is titled uh, rock beats cancer uh, yeah rock beats cancer a celebration for dave gallegos uh, a little uh, i'm reading the description here a little over a year after his diagnosis with cancer for the second time in his life dave is on the journey to full recovery Join us in this concert of celebration to support his recovery and hear him perform live in his original and tribute bands, as well as half a dozen other bands. And so, uh, list the performers here. Uh, band tributes to Queensryche, and I guess the name of that band is Walk in the Shadows. Yes, close to the yes. And in parentheses, it says showcase presentation, first live appearance. Wow, that's going to be quite a milestone there. A Metallica tribute band called Kill 'em All. A Scorpions tribute band called Sting and the Tail. And this is their full debut show. And a Led Zeppelin one called The Led Zeppelin Project. And then after that will be acoustic performances by Joshua Tree uh, uh, performing two. U2 songs. Uh, yeah, Joshua Tree is the name of the band named after the album. Like, you, you get the picture. Um, and then Zeppelin Unplugged performing Led Zeppelin songs. And then under that it says, and original bands, Dave Gallegos's Quartet, a flamenco band performing his original music, and progressive rock trio, Herd of Instinct a drums, war guitar, and Chapman stick trio. So that's quite a stacked uh, lineup there. So this is happening on Sunday, March 24th, beginning at 2 p.m. Central Daylight Time and ending at 10 p.m. Central Daylight Time. And this is going to be at the Maverick in Carrollton, Texas. So yeah, that's going to be quite an event there. Um, yeah, it's sure to be a lot of fun, I'm sure. And yeah, it's a great thing to celebrate, you know, like recovery and um, yeah, you know, like music is a great way to celebrate. I don't know like what else, like, is there anything truer than that? Like, I don't know. So yeah, very exciting stuff. And uh, congrats to Dave Gallegos and Close to the Yes and all these people who are being involved in that event it's sure to be amazing all right so the next news item here and this hit the internet so hard that i'm convinced that the release of this news is what caused the outages on facebook instagram and threads uh, which i'm sure a lot of you experienced and uh, this is uh, John Anderson and the Band Geeks have announced an upcoming U.S. tour and also some new music. So I'm going to read what it says here. Uh, John and the Band Geeks are currently putting the finishing touches on a brand new nine track CD set for release in late summer with a first single and video targeted for release in late June. Tour dates below. And so this is beginning on the East Coast with New Brunswick, New Jersey State Theater on May 30th. 
And it looks like it continues with a few more East Coast dates in June and then going to the central area. You got places like Chicago, for example. And then going into July, uh, I see Nashville, Tennessee is another place. And then eventually uh, coming to sort of to the West Coast, um, I see, you know, after Denver, Colorado, you've got Phoenix, Arizona on August 14th. I, that's going to be the closest place to where my dad's at. And then the final day, 10,000 Oaks uh, on August 16th. And that's the closest one to me where I'm at. And if that wasn't enough, you also got a few dates where Carl Palmer's band, you know, ELP Legacy, the return of Emerson, Lake and Palmer is going to be present and performing. So this would be at the Nashville show on July 24th, uh, the Cam Denton show on July 30th, the Bonner Springs show on August 2nd, uh, that's in Kansas, I believe, the La Vista, uh, the Astro Outdoors, um, August 4th, and what? Wait Park, Minnesota, the Ledge Amphitheater, August 7th. So that part was a bit of a surprise as well, because I'm so used to uh, Carl Palmer being closely involved with Yes, you know, the Yes official, if that people want to call them that. But because, um, you know, there's the ties with Steve Howe and Billy Sherwood and Jeff Downs, of course. So I'm re I'm used to those types of collaborations, but this one uh, kind of surprises me, but it's a welcome surprise. So yeah, I kind of wonder what it's going to be like being able to see both of those acts at those shows. Um, I saw Carl Palmer's band on the Royal Affair tour back in 2019, along with Yes and John Lodge's band and um, Asia, and that was a fantastic event. I think I saw that John Lodge is getting ready to, uh, in the near future, get back on the road after recovering, um, after having to postpone some of his dates. So wishing him well as well. Um, and yeah, the return of Emerson, Lake, and Palmer show, you know, with Keith and Greg on the screens, all the musicians play. And I saw that, um, you know, I was reminded that today is the eighth anniversary of when Keith Emerson passed away, you know, going on a brief detour here, but, you know, it can't be understated that Keith Emerson was such a huge pivotal part of progressive rock and he's still missed. I remember the day he passed, I was feeling really sad and I had to explain to a friend why I was feeling sad. So yeah, really, um, you know, whenever you have the time, go ahead and listen to some of Keith's work in ELP and his solo stuff. There's a lot of great stuff out there. But getting back to this John Anderson news, uh, the the big thing about this, you know, people knew that there was going to be this tour with the band geeks. There were rumblings about it uh, for a while. But this new music news is a surprise for many I'm sure. Now, the, this project, um, the press release does not have a name for this CD, but uh, you'll all see what it is once it comes out or as it gets closer and they're marketing it. I'm very curious to see what the video for the first single is like. Uh, when it comes to John Anderson's projects that he's been working on, you know, 1000 Hands, Invention of Knowledge, Something I've noticed that uh, is sort of a thing among fandom, you know, Yes fandom, prog rock fandom, is that people are kind of, there are different opinions on those. You know, I, I love A Thousand Hands and Invention of Knowledge, and I'm looking forward to the follow-ups of those whenever they come out. But I know that they don't necessarily resonate with everyone. Like, I've seen people talk about how some of that type of music isn't really what they're looking for or some people will listen to 
invention of knowledge, for example, and be like, oh, this is what I really want from prog rock. So you get some different opinions and whatnot. And I think it's great that there are different styles that John experiments with. It's nothing new. He's been doing this for decades and it's, you know, it's, I find it really refreshing, but all that is to say, I, I have a feeling that this CD that uh, John and the band geeks are putting out, I, I feel like the overall sound of it will probably generally please more people, you know, um, like, I think it'll have a better chance of resonating with uh, like the general fandom, if you want to call it that, for lack of a better name, um, then like these other projects are kind of different, but still have their merits, but they're like different styles. You know, I, I, I just have a feeling about this and I'm looking forward to hearing what the complete album sounds like when it comes out this, I believe this summer. Let me just look at the press release again. So... Um, oh, it's this tab. So, yeah, first single and video targeted for late June. And the CD is set for release in late summer. So I, I would guess probably an August release. Um, so I think that'll be a nice window for that. And, yeah, re really cool stuff. Um, I I'm also really curious what the artwork's going to be like. Now, on John Anderson's... Uh, John Anderson? Why did I pronounce it like that? <laughs> On John Anderson's YouTube channel, there's a promo video advertising this upcoming tour and the CD. And it, interestingly, it includes some Roger Dean art, but in a kaleidoscopic way. And someone pointed out that it's interesting how some of it, it comes from stuff that John was not on, you know, some other prog rock bands and some Yes albums that John himself was not on, uh, so it's fascinating, kind of strange, but anyway, um, I'm really excited for this upcoming CD and to listen to the full thing, and I definitely want to see this tour now that it's closer, you know, last year it was more confined to the East Coast, so I'm real good try my best to get to see this, um, yeah, I'm trying to remember if there's anything else regarding that. Um, yeah, I'm sure we'll hear more as this progresses. Um, I did see Richie Castellano say in a vlog update that the CD is finished. It was mastered uh, last week, I believe, on... It might have been on March 7th, if I remember, if I remember correctly. So it's nice to know there's a finished product there ready to hit the markets. And uh, I think, I really do think it's going to be more of a crowd pleaser for uh, prog rock fans in general. Like, I just have a feeling about it. Um, yeah. And people have had positive reception about the Band Geek shows as well last year. So it kind of makes me wonder how much of this new album might be showcased on the tour because the album m might not be released until August, which would be around the end of the tour. So would they try to play a couple songs or maybe just the single or would they try to mainly showcase the yes epics and classics as they've been doing? Um, Cause the poster for this uh, post on John's socials uh, still has that mo that um, headline, yes, epics, classics, and more. So I kind of hope that the and more part is new material from this new album. I think that'll be a nice surprise to throw in there for the fans. But we will just have to see. Now, there's also some updates regarding Rick Wakeman's touring and... Um, yeah, I'm just looking at rwcc.com. I don't think I talked about this recently, so I'll reiterate it here just in case. Um, so there's an announcement for the Yuletide Christmas show. This came out a couple weeks ago, so maybe we missed this on the show. But 
It says here, after a year off, Rick's traditional Christmas tour returns in November and December 2024 with an all-new show. And this is going to feature uh, one of his sons, Adam Wakeman, along with um, Molly Marriott, daughter of the late Steve Marriott, both, both of whom performed so brilliantly with him as part of the English rock ensemble on his return of the Caped Crusader tour in February. So this tour will start in uh, Portsmouth on the 23rd of November, 2024. It's easy to remember because it's Doctor Who Day. And then a High, Wycombe, uh, St. Albans, Folkestone, Leicester, Basingstoke, Evesham, Croydon, Bradford, Worthing, Ipswich, uh, or maybe it's Ipswick, uh, Bexhill, Poole, Guildford, and Bath before concluding at London's Cadogan Hall on December 20th. Uh, so it sounds like this will be a really fun show. And tickets are already on sale. So hopefully people who want to go can get those in time. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's sure to be a festive time. I'm just opening this uh, other news item here. So Rick's Ramblings, March 2024. Um so Rick, um, you know, each month he posts Rick's ramblings, sort of giving an update for people on what's been going on. Um, of course, it's been saddened about the passing of his friends Ian Lavender and Dave Myers. Um, and so he's been trying to, you know, make the best of things while he can. And he says, The return of the Caped Crusader tour was, for me, nothing short of fantastic. The band were amazing and performances astonishing, and thanks also for the tremendous reviews. The English Rock Ensemble will be out again in the UK in October 2025 for King Arthur, and with the first half of different Yes pieces performed the English Rock Ensemble way. The ERE will also be appearing at Crop Ready Festival this year and will hopefully be performing the full-length Journey to the Center of the Earth it will be the same lineup as the February tour, with the exception that Lee Pomeroy is unavailable, and so the very able Matt Pegg will be stepping into his shoes. I've been flat out preparing... Uh, f wait, I think I missed a part. Um, oh, okay, so a, a big update to his touring is that um, he's trying to pace himself... And for that reason, the, there will be no more meet and greets. Um, he says, I think they have run their course anyway. I've always enjoyed meeting everybody and answering some great questions and will retain some great memories of meeting old friends as well as new. So, you know, I really feel for the people who haven't been able to do these meet and greets with him. Um, I had the fortune of being able to, you know, do one with him. Oh, Basically, like, he was um, outside, um, like, in the main, like, outside of the room where he performed. Uh, this would have been in November 2017, and he was at a table signing things for people and answering questions. So, I'm glad I was able to go to that, but uh, I could sort of understand, you know, like, he wants to be cautious and pace himself and make sure he's in good health. So, yeah, I guess all I can say is people, like, go to these shows and enjoy the music while you can, you know? And, um, yeah, so just make the most of everything. And uh, So he says, I've been flat out preparing for America and South America, and as these will be my last one-man shows in these countries, I've been working hard at getting a balance as regards the music. The shows will premiere... I hate that word, Yes Sonata, a 20-minute piano piece featuring many of the themes and melodies from my times with Yes. I will be brutally honest and say that I nearly gave up on the piece as I could never get it as I envisaged until one week ago when I sat at the piano and it all started to click into place for the first time. It brought a big smile to my face as it all started to make musical sense. 
On the 17th, the day before I fly to New York, I will be making an appearance at the Talking Pictures TV event at St. Albans, where rumor has it I am to be interviewed by my good friend Mike Reed and possibly Neil Cronin as well. Whoever has the misfortune to be asking me questions, I apologize, but I'm really looking forward to seeing everybody. I'm taking my laptop on tour, but it is so old I don't hold out much hope for being uh, to log on much, but I shall try. Bye for now, and here's to normality. Cheers, Rick. So, yeah, nice to see that he's keeping busy and, you know, pacing himself, taking good care of himself. Um, and of course, uh, I think we already talked about some of the Oliver Wakeman stuff going on recently, and uh, there will be more on that as more info comes out and, you know, other stuff happens. So, um, very excited for stuff going on with Oliver. Now, there was also a post from Patrick Moraz where, you know, on his Facebook page was this post with photos of him and Steve Hackett himself, you know, former Genesis guitarist uh, who's been outperforming Genesis Classics. It's such a great show that I got to see back in November. Uh, so in this post, uh, Patrick said, Phyllis and I went to see Steve Hackett's concert at the Ruth Eckerd Hall in Clearwater last Saturday night. Uh, this will have been a few days ago when he posted. So earlier this month, I believe, maybe end of last month. Uh, we were fortunate enough to see Steve and his lovely wife, Joe at the meet and greet before the concert. It was great because my friendship with Steve goes back to 1975 and it was fun to catch up. We even reminisced about our times together in Brazil during the 70s. Steve's playing was exceptional and the whole band was phenomenal. The overall sound of the concert was extremely well mixed and exactly right. Kudos to the engineer, sound crew, and the stage manager. The whole concert was a wonderful and special listening experience. We loved hearing the Genesis pieces in the second half of the show. The band members' solos were stellar. What an amazing group of musicians. I highly recommend to everyone who can make it to one of the Steve Hackett concerts during the 2024 tour to absolutely do so. You will be totally uplifted. And yeah, I second that recommendation as well. It's such a tight act, does justice to the Genesis material. And it's really a show that's not to be missed if you're a huge fan of the gen the classic Genesis material, you know? Um, yeah, just thinking about, like, the couple of times uh, Dad and I have been able to interview Steve Hackett on our show. He's a really great guest and, you know, just a virtualistic um, musician. Did I say that word right? Virtual? Okay, I'll figure it out later. Um so uh, another thing, of course, right now, as we speak, a uh, cruise to the edge is still going on, and there have been photos trickling out here and there, and uh, I'm sure we'll hear some more stuff about it um, in the near future. But there have been some cool posts. Um, I saw Billy Sherwood make a couple uh, just today. He said that, he and I think Dave Kersner were part of a painting session, and he shared a picture of a painting of the in the court of the Crimson King cover. And just look at these posts right here. Do do do. Um. Yeah. Okay. So, I one of the I think this was on the first day. Billy said having a blast playing with the Dave Kersner All Star Band on Cruise to the Edge 2024. Just played "Don't Look Down" from the last Arc of Life record. Sounded killer. Thanks in large part to Dave Kersner's band. And now for the encore. Okay, so I guess he posted this in the middle of the show, and Dave Kersner also said Cruise to the Edge was jam packed with fun and madness. I'll share some pics from our show. We had lasers. We decided against uh, shooting Fern out of the cannon at the end. Instead, he made his guitar feedback 
I kept a safe distance in case it went airborne. We did our first Arc of Life uh, song live together with Billy Sherwood and some... <laughs> uh, I, I'm not sure what that is. Um, it's, um, let me look this up. Or Actually, I think I know what it is. Um, okay, well, he mentions Matt Dorsey and... Uh, Durga had a beautiful solo moment on Siren's song. Uh, Derek was on fire behind the kit. We had a great time. And yeah, and I also saw a post from Billy uh, maybe before the uh, cruise, um, or maybe just right before when it was going to kick off. Uh, he says, it was truly an honor to have toured with Asia as we opened for Rock Legends Journey a few years ago. I got to hang with another one of my bass heroes, Ross Valerie. Ross has made a great new solo record, and I just wanted to share this link to his first release from the record. The bass playing is so creative, and the tone is in a word awesomeness. Enjoy, and please spread the word for my friend Ross. Gotta support the bass players, people, for we are the lowest, lol. Uh, so yeah, there's this video up on YouTube um, by Ross Valerie called Tomland. And yeah, check out the playing there. Uh, Dad and I will be doing a Billy Sherwood birthday episode on the 14th, so this Thursday. Uh, that would be, just double checking the time, I think it's at 3 p.m., Pacific, uh, but let me just double check that. Uh, let's see, March 14th, yeah, March 14th, 3 p.m. Pacific, unless we change our minds and end up having to move it for some reason. Like, you never know what comes up, but that's what we have on our schedule right now. And I think we're going to be talking about Billy's roles as like the sixth musician in yes concerts like in the talk tour open your eyes and ladder tours um and you know picking out like which bits he plays and whatnot you know talking about those moments uh so yeah if you have any billy sherwood memories um you'd like to share uh, we might read them on the show so people can reach us via yesshiftpodcast at gmail.com. And you can also follow us at YesShift on YouTube and Facebook. And uh, if you search YesShift in podcast apps, you'll probably find us. And tell your friends, your fellow music-loving friends. And um, yeah, we'll see you all soon. Thanks, everyone.